Hello, my name is Nick Broughton and I'm a random fish. Let's all be random fishes together, shall we? Hit that subscribe button and become a random fish like me. So, last week I talked about ka -ching. And I was looking at my laptop a lot because obviously I was trying to remember names of actors and actresses. Um, so, and I said last week that one of the things I was going to do was look at the worst witch. The worst witch was not the CBBC show that if you're of a certain age you shouldn't be watching these videos anyway, but fuck it. Um, its current version of the worst witch on CBBC is, has been shown on Netflix and I thought I'd watch a few episodes to see what it was like. It may be a bit nostalgic so I started scouring the internet trying to find episodes of the original 1998 show. And of course that wasn't the original, there was another one before that, made I believe in the uh, 70s or 80s. And that's fine, but for me, the 1998 version is the one that I grew up with, so that's the one I'm going to be talking about. Now 1998-2001 they ran three seasons of The Worst Witch, and it ran on CITV. And it was great. It was essentially a female version of Harry Potter but felt a lot more connected to it. Now I'm not saying that you don't feel connected to Harry Potter because you read the books and then you saw the play and then you saw the films. For Worst Witch, however, you read the books but then you could almost watch the show and compare those and see what happened there. Now, a big difference between a film and a TV show, as I'm sure many of you will recognise by this point, is that in a film you have less time to cram certain things in, especially if you're doing it by book. Now, this is something that the Lord of the Rings managed quite decently, but they cut quite a lot of stuff out so much that they had to create special editions of everything. Um, where this wasn't done so well in a lot of cases was the Harry Potter films. Now, if you want to know more about why that is, I would heartily recommend you go off and find Dominic Noble on YouTube or to look up his series, Lost in Adaptation. Uh, he discusses quite a bit of it over there along with his, I wouldn't say friend, but his, his, mag his magical colleague Terence. Um, those two discuss it at length, so I would advise you to go and check those out. But going back to The Worst Witch, this show was one of those shows that I was aware of and a show that I watched and found kind of fun but as I got older I remember it less and less and less and I think this is why certain actors and actresses that exist within this show don't do an awful lot to engage you in an actual conversation and oh my god I have to circle back to Harry Potter again, just a second, because unfortunately these two shows, these shows and these films, did come out sort of around the same time period, so it only made sense to judge them as independent creations, and judge them against each other. And so you, ha you, you do end up doing, no matter what you do. Um, Harry Potter had bland child actors at the beginning, that they had a lot of child actor issues, as it were, at the beginning. But those improved over time. Again, TV show, you spend a lot more time with the characters. This can be to their betterment or their detriment. It depends entirely on how you view it. And unfortunately, in terms of these girls, some of the child acting was just, just fucking abysmal. I mean, good God. It really did feel kind of bad. There are only a few child actors that I will legitimately say impressed me over the years. Now, I don't believe that, apart from a couple on The Worst Witch, none of them truly grabbed me as actors. The first one being Mildred Hubble, the main character of the show herself, Played by Georgina Sherrington. Just gonna double check that. Yes, Georgina Sherrington is her actual name. I, I had to write that down so I could actually make sure that I knew that I was pronouncing it correctly. 
because uh, sometimes these uh, names just uh, have different ways of saying them that just pop up out of nowhere. It's really bad. But Georgina Sherrington played Mildred Hubble, and she stuck out to me. Not because, not just because she was the main character, but because you saw her progress as an actress. You saw her attempt to do something with a bit more intrigue with it. Now, for a lot of these, uh, for a lot of these actresses, the acting, the bad acting, isn't always their fault. But that's something I'll come back to in a minute. The other actress who I thought did kind of well, and only lasted for one season, I find I find out not that long ago, which was very weird, was uh, Felicity Felicity Jones. Um, to give to give her the true to give her a true name, I mean she she played Ethel Hallow, the main the, the Draco Malfoy, if you will, the stuck up snobby witch who very much sat there and went, how, how are you here to Mildred Hubble? Like, very looks looks down on everybody and everybody kind of mentality. It's not great. Um, but the thing is, her character, or her actress anyway, disappeared. She Felicity Jones stopped playing Ethel Hallow after one season. And then in seasons two to three, she was played by another actress called Katie Allen. Now, Katie Allen, I do remember, because she was very good at the whole, mm, look. You know that look. If you think you don't know that look, you have been lied to your entire life because the liar is you. You know what that look is. It's that look of going, ugh, dear me. It's that condescending, annoying look, and everybody does it so well. And everyone who's ever tried to play a bully in a show, whether it comes to, when it comes to being around, you know, um, people who are being a condescending jackass, that look is key. And Casey Allen friggin' nailed it throughout the show. Genius. Absolute genius. But the thing that also intrigues me is that Felicity Jones came back to play Ethel Hallow again in the sequel series, which I will talk about in a minute. However, the one thing that separates Worst Witch in this incarnation for me from everything else is the CG. Now, in 1998, children, cast your minds back to went to that tremendous year because, unfortunately, people, effects weren't so good back then. I know. I know. It's messed up and it's weird. Um, it's a weird thing where not everything is 100% as amazing as it could be. Um, something I will always find amusing and something I will always find fun anyway is the perpetual motion, perpetual desire to try and make CG better for everybody. And for the most part, in some cases, it really did work. I mean, I mean, hell, the reason why CG became such a big thing in the first place is because of films like Jurassic Park which nailed the whole thing. It nailed the whole flipping thing throughout the entire process. Brilliant to me. Um, but in some cases, if you're given the, the budget of the budget of a tin can meal, you can only do so much. And unfortunately, the CD does reflect that. Um, it's kind of like how some people, how people sometimes defend the, the, the CG in the original series of Star Trek because it was given, you know, the budget of a ham sandwich and two days to be put together. You know, the, and it sort of, it works in its favour with Worst Witch as well because, like I said, this is what I was going to come back to from when I was talking earlier. Bad CG and reasonably nervous young actors and actresses they don't always blend well together and sometimes you get very either very over the top or very underwhelming performances from the actors and actresses especially if the CG isn't great and unfortunately in a few episodes in a season I would have thought of course more than anything else of the worst wish we got that and we didn't get the greatest amount of acting chops from these people. However, 
I am not saying that they aren't good, and I'm not saying that this series isn't good, because it is. This series had some brilliant moments, it had some good characters, it had some good villains that were thrown into the last minute. I mean, I'll be honest, I don't really like the idea of there being, like, real villains, especially when it comes to, like, people studying in a school. Um, the only reason as to why the Harry Potter stuff worked for it within that premise was that it affected not only, you know, the magical world, but our world as well, the, the human world. Um, and unfortunately, in Worst Witch, it isn't the the whole, you know, real world, magical world thing isn't overly explored in this. Though from what I've seen on Netflix, it is explored in the in the new um, in the new version that's done. I hadn't seen anything that says that, but I'll be honest, I'm not entirely sure. Um, something I think was kind of cool that this show did. When I say sequel series, I mean that there were two of them, really. The first one was Weird Sister College. Now, this show only lasted a few months out of the year. It wasn't... It, it kind of can't have been received very well for it to have only lasted that long. I think only 13 episodes were ever created of the show. Which is sad, because I liked the premise. And, I mean, I know I'm a 29-year-old guy now watching a TV show on YouTube about this sort of thing. But I mean, I can't, I can't not say that. I mean, I think it's a kind of, I think it's kind of a fun thing. I think it's a, a, an interesting thing that it's done what it's done. Um, the thing that was interesting about Weird Sister College was that it tried to do, it tried to be Buffy. Now, first of all, if anyone hasn't seen Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and you're of the age appropriateness where you can listen to every fucking swear word under the goddamn mothership fucking swan, then shame on you. Because Buffy may not be filled with swear words, but it is more for young adults than it is for anything else. Um, and I just give myself a lot of language restrictions on this. Oh, look at that. Um, but. Buffy the Vampire Slayer paved the way for a lot of other shows to try and do what it did. To provide not a long episode, but kind of an episode that was part of a much larger plot that would overarch in the series. To a much grander degree involving young people and young adults. Now, again, Buffy the Vampire Slayer is... Is, the, is one of the hallmarks of this, I feel. Especially on TV, anyway. Maybe not in books, maybe not in movies. But in TV, hell yeah. It felt like that. And it was one of... I, I, I may be saying this because I love Joss Whedon. I'm not entirely sure, but... It could be. It could be that, but at the same time, it was a brilliant attempt at a show to try and create an overarching plot that worked within a whole bunch of, you know, sub sub-episodes, if you will. Or subplots within an episode. Um, there's the most brilliant scene ever in the in the original Worst Witch show of '98. The character, the actress who played Miss Harbroom, Kate Dun Duncane. Kate Duncane, I believe, is the word. If I'm saying that wrong, oh no, Kate Duchene. I am sorry. I couldn't see the little thing over the e. Um, Kate Duchene. I believe it's... Uh, I, I'm not quite sure. If I'm saying it wrong, please correct me in the comments. I'm not sure. Um, but she played Miss Harbroom, the hot-ass um, assistant head. And she was always the first one to sort of punish Millie and her friends, or Mildred Hubble and her friends. Sorry to use her real name. I use her full name anyway. Um, and she was always the hot-ass of the group. And... She's she's kind of like Snape from Harry Potter, but, you know, with a lot more... I mean, I wouldn't like to see her and Alan, uh, and Alan Rickman, you know, rest in peace and all that. Um, I wouldn't have liked to have seen them in a, in a stare-off. That would have just been scary. That would have just been scary as all hell. It really would have been. But what amuses me the most about her character is that over those years, she... She never liked Mildred, but I think over time she grew to slightly respect her. And there's a brilliant bit in Weird Sister College, I don't know, the reason why I'm coming back is to bring this up, 
um, all of them have to walk under an archway and there's a little gargoyle there with a glowing red thing in it and, it and it lights up and then if you're not worthy something appears in front of you as if to essentially say what you know this is why you're not getting through can you do something about it kind of mentality and Mildred gets this it glows red and Mrs. Harbroom appears in front of her and gives her this whole thing about saying you know Always running headfirst into trouble, never thinking about the consequences. This is who you are as a per as a person, as a character to Mildred Hubble. And the line she gives back is genius because she says, "I'll have no one then to blame but myself." And you know, I I'm old enough to make my own decisions. And Miss Hubble says, "Fantastic." In which case, you're going to have to learn to live with them. Good luck. And she fades away, and she gets to go on into the college. The reason why I like this is that it's a it's a lesson that's not often imparted, I think, in TV shows. Um, in TV shows, sometimes nowadays, sometimes back then, wh whichever way around you want it, there seems to be this mentality of the the grown the, the man child or the woman child. These people who've you know, these people who never leave their parents' basements, who rely on them for every little thing, who have no life outside of attempting to keep their youth going from when they were, you know, 13, 14 years old. Now, I understand the irony of me talking about this, because you probably think that I'm like that. Um... You know, a grown man walking around talking about kids' programs from when he was eight, when he was younger. How sad is he? But the kind of thing that this show imparts that I loved was the idea of going. You make these decisions. You then have to live with the consequences. You can't ask anyone else to bail you out of anything. And I liked that lesson, and I loved the fact that it taught that lesson so decently and it was so quick but it was something that lasted throughout the rest of the show now i've watched all the episodes of Wizards to college that was ever released i mean everyone from four onwards i think i mean unfortunately youtube doesn't have access to all of them and i couldn't find them anywhere else at least not in any legal capacity which is what i'm kind of feeling like i should be doing in this day and age so for Weird Sister college anyway this show then also promoted the idea of when you screw up, you have to do something about it. You can't just sit on your ass and wait for something to come to you. You have to go and do it yourself. And I think that was a great lesson to impart, especially when it came to the to the young adults in the audience who maybe had just left school. You know, they just finished their studies and they were worried about going into the outside world. And this show really does hammer home this fact of going... You can go out into the wide world, you can be treated as an adult, but you will, when you screw up, you will be held accountable for your actions. And I think that's a genius bit of knowledge. And I think that's something that's not often imparted to a lot of people. Um, nowadays, it is imparted in quite a few things, but it's imparted to kids of the age of, you know, of, of just turning 13. And... I know that now we live in a diff in a different society where even when they're younger kids are you know are stepping up a lot more and becoming more responsible and that's fine but for my generation that was one of the good points and that was one of the better points that was served um to move on to the last one that I want to talk about because I said there were two sequel series out of this where sister college was the first one the second one was called the new worst witch which I don't know if it was based on any existing written properties. I know Worst Witch was, and I don't believe Weird Sister was, Weird Sister College was. But New Worst Witch, I have absolutely no, not a clue. I don't have a damn clue. Um, but in New Worst Witch, you get H H Henrietta Hubble. Now, I have no idea who plays her. I haven't looked that up. That wasn't the show I was planning on talking about at all. Um, but to give you the basic setup, it's that whole next generation thing. Uh, she's Mildred's cousin. She's going to Cackles for the first time. She's a lot more um, arrogant than Mildred was. Mildred, when she first turned up, was very reserved, very hidden. Um, 
in the 98 version anyway, I don't quite know about the rest of the other versions, she might have been a cocky character from the books, I'm not sure. But in the Worst Witch 98 show, Mildred was very quiet, very reserved, trying to sort of fit in and not do anything too stupid, and then stupid things just started happening, and she was like, you know what, stuff it. Because she had all of her friends around. Henrietta Hubble sort of turns out and goes, I'm going to be a great witch, nah, blow stuff up, oh crap. It's that kind of show. Um, the thing that amuses me the most when it comes to these, the thing that gets me about these shows that exist is that these these producers wanted to try to continue this story through different shows. I have nothing against this. Nothing. But the fact is, it didn't really take it anywhere. In Weird Sister College, you could have done so much more with the show. You could have made it a much darker show, a much more interesting show. Made it a lot more... Not violent, but almost horror level, if you will. Make it like that. And then you could have granted this whole new experience to give these actors and actresses something really cool to focus on and then you could have had a much greater viewing point and then you could have gone more seasons and gone darker and darker to the point where, where Mildred actually does finally graduate she's finally understood everything that she was taught in Cackles and she understands everything she learns in this college and she's ready to go out into the world and become a... And to, to go out into the world and be, you know, a proper witch um... Also, side note, little bit of a side note, this goes to Harry Potter as well. People, we were obsessed for a while with the idea of learning magic in a magical school, but um, when Mildred does did leave Weird Sisters, Weird Sister College, what was she doing for money? Like, was she working as a waitress for the rest of her life? And if so, you know, when she drops off Henrietta at, at Cackles, when she takes her, when she takes her there, you know, and she teleports herself away using magic. Yay, lovely, brilliant, I love that. But what? Where does she go? What does she do with herself? Does she sit around in a, in a cave all day with a with a coven of witches? You know, all of a sudden I'm flashing back to some the sorcerer too, where you wander into a cave and one. Which is deaf, one which has got an eye, one which can't see, and the other which has got no teeth, so she can't speak. It's, it feels like this is what could potentially happen. Now, I understand that in Weird Sister they did that with Millie having a job in the in the cafe as a waitress, and I got that, and I liked that. But I do kind of, I am kind of amazed at this idea that. What happens? Do, do witches get paid for what they do? Because no one knows they exist in this world. Like, the whole idea about the magical community in any fantasy series is that they're all kept secret, and any of them that aren't are set in a time period where a wizard would mostly be, you know, with a king or with someone who could pay for them. You know, this is the kind of thing that happened. It's really weird. But that's just a side rant for another day, and it just... It bugs me, people. It friggin' bugs me. Shut up. But, anyway, moving on. Those are the three series of Worst Witch. Like I said, there was one from before, and there's one that's just... Not recently, I think it came out... Possibly 2013, 2014, something like that, I'm not sure. But the fact of the matter is that it came out in the UK on, on CBBC, which, as I've said it before, I, I love CBBC. I think they're great. I think they, they're, they're probably still doing great programming now. But I will, I will have to re-watch a few, a few episodes to sort of see if I like it because I have watched a couple of episodes and it's not bad. It's not great, but it's not bad, but I don't know, I, maybe I'll watch a couple more episodes and see how I feel about it. But I've yet to know whether or not I still want to do that or not, because I'm still thinking about what I want to do next. So, speaking of which, if you have any ideas for kids shows, or any old shows from, from way back in the 90s, or you know, the early 2000s that you want me to review, 
please comment below. Uh, please uh, let me know on Twitter. My handle is at the random fish. Do please tweet at me if you come up with something. Or, you know, um, just drop me a comment, drop me a tweet, see how I respond. DM me if you feel like you can on there. I'm fine with that. But yeah, please guys, do let me know because I, I'm i trying to think of some good old shows that I can talk about that aren't really talked about on YouTube that much. Let's try and keep this old British TV shows alive. Let's really discuss them properly again, shall we? So with that being said, and with all the possible dark magic I can muster because I don't even have a wand, Avada Kedavra, Expelliarmus, Wait, those are the wrong spells. That ah, crap. Oh well. Random fish out.